Here I have an equipment overview HMI screen with a number of devices that make up two tanks. As you're operating your sequences in your plant, you're typically operating multiple devices at a time. In 5.0, our ownership and arbitration native functionality allows you to build up equipment groups without writing any custom code. From these equipment groups, you can send commands down to all of the devices or propagate statuses upward. We can manage our equipment groups using 5.0 faceplates. So here we have our organizational tree, and the highest level of that org tree is Tank Farm. Expanding Tank Farm, we see that it has two children, Tank 101 and Tank 102. Clicking down further into Tank 101, we can see all four devices that are associated with Tank 101. If we expand Tank 102, we can see that it currently has two of its devices, but it's still missing two devices. So clicking into edit mode, we can add these devices. We'll click on Tank 102, and we will add two children to this. Some other options we have on the screen is to delete the current node that we're on or select bus. Closing this, we can go ahead and click into one of the children that we just added, um, and we'll click select bus. So what this pops up with is a list of every single node that we can put on this organizational tree. So we can see tank farm, we can see tank 101, we can see tank 102, and we can see all of the individual devices that are in this screen. So we'll go ahead and add this first one and assign it to Pump 102. And so now Pump 102 is a child of Tank 102. The other thing we see on this screen is propagate the following commands from the parent node. So here we can set what we want Pump 102 to accept from Tank 102 or from Tank Farmer, anything that has that device in its organizational tree. So we have options for alarming which we'll go ahead and select. We have options for command source. And lastly, we have options for if we want it to be able to put a device into virtual or physical mode. Clicking over onto the other screen, here we can set what information we want to be propagated from that child up to the parent. Um, so we select that status information. Closing this, we'll go ahead and configure that other child. So we'll assign this to valve 103. Allow those commands to be propagated. And now we have our organizational tree built up. So closing this, we can click on one of the nodes again, and now it pops up with a different faceplate. So this faceplate is really similar to what you see as a faceplate with current process objects. So we can see if the devices are in program control, we can see different information about those children, um, if something's not ready or if it's out of service. We also have the ability to put everything into program mode or operator mode or external. Um, and then clicking through these tabs, we can configure if it's in virtual or physical. We can request maintenance control, and we can also see alarming information and respond to those alarms. So again, we're on the highest level, tank farm. And so what we can do is request program control. So right now, everything is in operator mode, which you can see from this white flag. If we request program control, from the highest level, we issued one command, and that propagates down through all of the devices. So instead of having to open the faceplates for all seven devices and do this one by one, we only need to issue one single command. The other value add of this new feature is that it allows you to better manage shared equipment. So looking at this HMI screen, you can see that both Tank 101 and Tank 102 want to use this distribution valve, Valve 103. So if we're executing sequences in our plant's operation, we want to make sure that both aren't trying to use that valve at the same time. 
So if I start up a clean tank 101 operation, it starts up a cleaning operation and we can see that this shared valve is owned by tank 101. Now say I want to clean tank 102. If I request that operation to start, it doesn't allow the, the operation to start until that valve frees up. So right now you can see that tank 101 owns that shared valve but tank 102 is waiting in line to own that valve. So now that tank 101 is releasing it, when it releases, then tank 102 automatically goes into its operation for cleaning because it was queued. By default, these queues are first in, first out, um, and just come in in the order that the request is received. But we are able to set arbitration rules to manipulate the queue based on what we want to prioritize.